I don't know if any of the uh, children picked up a piece of paper and crayons on their way in. I'm just trying to think that for the next 10 minutes while I'm going to say something, uh, you could think about the following rhyme, basically. You could draw a picture which it might inspire for you. Some of you will know it. You can give me the last line because the, uh, the rhyme is limited. Two men looked out through prison bars. One saw mud, the other saw... Yes, okay, that's good. Yeah, nobody's calling out. That's very appropriate. They're doing like this. Okay, two men. So here we go. Do you want to try and do a picture of that? Or are you at home, you know, who are younger? I want to think about that. Looking out through prison bars and what do you see? That fits in quite well with the uh, readings today. Look, this is the first time back for me on a uh, Sunday service. And truthfully, I feel a bit out of practice. It's also out of practice for me to be speaking in front of real people as opposed to their pictures. So I've uh, done as best as I can and uh, I've got a, a little talk for you. It's our first time back, so I wanted to uh, think, you know, some special message to do with the lockdown and where we are at now. So I'm thinking about that. I'm also thinking about, in recent weeks, we've been looking at Paul's letter to the Philippians, which Clive mentioned. So I've uh, put together some verses and some thoughts from Paul's letter to the Philippians. In this talk, we can look back on the past year and how things might have changed for you with whatever busyness or sadness that you've experienced. But also, we stand on the threshold of something different. Let's see if we can get some inspiration from Paul in his prison cell all those years ago. Prison in those days had very few comforts. And Paul was a man of, in his 50s or very early 60s, and one writer wrote a book entitled uh, about the Apostle Paul, Paul Apostle of the Free Spirit. Apostle of the Free Spirit. I just wonder what it's like to be a person of free spirit who gets confined to a prison cell with an uncertain outcome. If he's lucky, he might be able to see a bit through the door or through the window, and I wonder what he could see. His life had changed because he was a, uh, a travelled man going by road and by boat here and there. He had freedom to preach when he was younger, but now he was in chains, chained up physically. But if you are chained up physically, does that mean that you can't anymore have a free spirit. It would be difficult, but to be in chains physically might still give you the chance of still having that free spirit. That's to do with the poem. What can you see through the prison bars? Is it mud or is it stars? How indeed does Paul cope with his captivity? Well, the evidence from the letter to the Philippians is he he copes with it remarkably well. We don't know everything. But uh, somehow he's able to cope with difficult situations. When I think of the Apostle Paul, there's a book title, not Apostle of the Free Spirit, another one that comes to my mind. And those of you who are younger might have read this or had this read to you. There are two books that have the title, Once There Were Giants. Would you like to wave to me if you've heard of that? Once There Were Giants? Okay, I'm trusting those who are watching online to have hold, held up your hand because we've got a, a zero response from here. It's a book for children. It's written by Martin Waddell and it's about when somebody was very, very small, they seemed to be surrounded by giants. 
And sometimes when you come into church, if you're very small, you might feel just the same way too. Everybody is so much bigger than you are. So that's a book, Once There Were Giants. But actually, that's not the book I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of something altogether different, but still having the same title, Once There Were Giants. The second book was written for adults by Jerry Eisenberg. It was about the golden age of heavyweight boxing from 1962 to 1997. So the, this was the, the giants in the golden age of heavyweight boxing. But actually, I think that's something of a parallel that I think of the Apostle Paul himself as being a giant in the golden era of the Christian faith. I've just changed the last ones. He was a giant. And you can see this in the prison cell. The prison cell doesn't seem to get on top of him. Uh, most marvellous. In his prison cell, he's there fighting for the faith with passion and grace. Well, I share the same faith, I think, as the Apostle Paul, but I am hard pressed to say that I'm in the same league as him when it comes to inner toughness. One evidence for how well he was able to cope in a prison cell was that he was able to transform it into a holy place. This is an interesting thought to me, to transform an ordinary place, for him a prison cell, into a holy place. And in that holy place of his prison cell, his faith, love and hope still shone out to others. And he also transformed his prison cell into a place of prayer. So here are three standouts for me from Paul's attitude when he was in prison, having lost his freedom. And I'm now thinking about you and about me and about some losses uh, which we may have gone through in the past several months, basically. First of all, whatever he had lost in terms of personal freedom, he still had a sense of direction and ambition. His life was not going to be defined by his prison cell. His mind was still free to dream and to plan. He imagined what he was going to do once he was free. The second standout is that even though there was no electricity and probably very little lighting in the cell, and he was surrounded by an emotional darkness and difficulty, he protected his mind from his current darkness and focused instead on light, beautiful thoughts and hope. The third standout is that he had learned the secret of contentment. Well, I wonder how we have got on during whatever difficulties and diff different difficulties we've been through during this lockdown period. What have we learned? How have we kept ourselves um, with a, a mind that did not succumb to the darkness? And what hope do we still have for the future? So we're switching from Paul to you and to me. I don't want to change places with him in his prison cell. They were brutal in those days. I wouldn't swap my lockdown experience for his experience in the prison cell. But I ask the question, are the three standouts which I mentioned possible pathways for you as you stand on the threshold of a new situation. You probably will have less restrictions and more freedom, but how will you use your freedom? Like the Apostle Paul, can you have a plan for what you might do when you get free from all of this? 
And so, I wonder, what I could do differently when the COVID lockdown allows? What I could do differently when the COVID lockdown allows? And secondly, what would it be like to serve Christ wholeheartedly and with a free spirit? I wonder. I also wonder if there is anybody here who did any pictures or anything about looking through a prison cell window. Or those of you at home who I can't see. Um, but it's all about that. Within our own limits, what can Jesus bring to our life of light and beauty and hope? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the great wisdom and grace which we see in Paul's attitude to life and hope. And we want to ask you, please, that we would find strength through him. We thank you that he is an example to us and he is one of the giants of the golden age of the early church. In your name. Amen.